Yeah, for the past five years has been quite a journey at Philips in terms of uh, our digital transformation. Uh, what started essentially as a digital marketing transformation has sort of grown into a full-blown company uh, transformation uh, in terms of our products, our services, getting connected, uh, advancing our digital marketing capabilities, and even looking at things related to our supply chain. Uh, also transforming that in customer care. Um, what I think is so fascinating is we started a journey and we thought we'd be done. But you're never done in digital. Uh, everything's changed. Uh, you know, four or five years ago, I mean, we didn't have uh, WhatsApp, we didn't have uh, AI or VR or AR, all these things didn't even exist. So um, our philosophy at Philips is really, we have to disrupt ourselves um, and be agile and really uh, take it inside our own DNA as employees, not just some digital team in the corner being responsible, but uh, everybody needs to be a part of this transformation uh, or we're not going to be able to, to, to survive as a, as a company and for our customers. So that's a little bit of uh, how we've been doing it. It's a lot about mindset. I think it's really, not to, mindset of course, but I think also skills, new skills. It's like um, developing new muscles. Uh, you have to reach, you have to train them to do things slightly differently. Um, I think in the digital era, uh, we were just actually with the, our Turkish team uh, yesterday um, and spending time, you know, talking about the complexity of digital uh, and, and customers now making uh, decisions in a very different way. It was so much easier when we just had to do a TV commercial, right? Uh, <laughs> in some radio spots. Now we have to be doing things all the time, everywhere. So that's what I think makes it complicated. Complicated, but uh, you have to retrain yourself as a marketeer. Yeah, I think um, the number one thing to think about with respect to a digital strategy is always put the customer first. And that customer could be consumer, that customer could be uh, a business, or that could be government, um, you know, depending. But put the customer first. And I think one of the interesting things is don't underestimate how one part of the digital ecosystem is influencing another, especially in uh, B2B. So if you're gonna launch a application or um, a service to uh, professionals, they're very much shaped by Uber. Everybody wants an Uber-like experience. Yes. Wouldn't everything be wonderful if you just like pulled it up and you pushed a button? That'd be seamless. fantastic, seamless, yes. wonderful user experience. People expect that, you know, um, and I think that's a real challenge for like governments making things for citizens. You know, I mean, they're not user experience designers in government. Um, and the same thing for professionals. So I think that's where I think uh, the consumer world is, uh, the consumerization uh, of things is really shaping other parts of, of the business. So I say from a strategy perspective, if the customer is put at the, f the center of everything you're trying to do, work backward from there. Don't go with your internal view of like, we need to sell more of this or we need to build that. Put the customer and they will take you to success and to revenue uh, if you do it properly. Yeah, and I touched on this a little bit in the beginning. I think um, everyone is a, needs to become a bit of a technologist. So I think this notion of marketing um, and I, I'm, I'm being tongue in cheek, but uh, it's not about uh, logos and colors and these kinds of things anymore. It's really about data and analytics and the science of uh, customer behavior. Um, and now I think what digital and technology gives us is that you know real time insight that we can do stuff with that we couldn't ever do before. And um, I think that radically shifts the role of a marketeer. They all have to be data and analytics junkies almost and technologists to understand consumer behavior or results or what's working. Um, you don't have to wait until, you know, months or weeks to collect information, whether it's for, and even looking at focus groups. Do you need to have a focus group anymore? You can do it all online, right? You can get that immediate feedback. Um, and then I think also, you know, how do you become real time? How do you pivot based on learning? 
Um, and, and we have some nice examples at Philips. I mean, when I got there, we weren't even doing things like A-B testing. Simple, simple things. Uh, Booking.com runs a couple hundred tests a day. Um, I'm not selling airline seats, so I don't have to run that many tests. But, uh, you know, this is, this is how the marketeer's role has changed uh, in terms of what the data and technology can tell us. How do you take that insight and improve experience, improve results, improve products, whatever it may be? That's where I think the major shift is. Um, and you can also quantify. I think a marketeer's role also now evolves into the, 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 the result and the impact that marketing actually has on the business. Um, and if you can't translate that, then I think uh, you know, it's going to be increasingly difficult to get budgets, because you, know, you have to prove the value and the return on investment. Yes. And with the, all these technologies and digital, you can do that in a much easier way than you could before. I think uh, there's a couple things in the, in the media landscape that I think continue to shift. I think brand safety is uh, always, an always, an, always a challenge and an issue uh, for any brands, um, especially um, given um, you know, how the world, there's a lot of things happening in the world, politically and, and these kinds of things. And how do you protect your brand to not associate it with certain things that are happening? Um, and the, the, the power of uh, the crowd um, you know, is much faster in a global connected world um, than it used to be. So I think uh, really owning uh, brand safety from a media perspective is a big trend. I also uh, see uh, through investments in ad technology and media technology, sort of the, I'll call it, there was a bit of a, there was a bit of a, a curtain between the brands and your media investments and maybe what was how it was being invested or spent. Um, and I think that brands like ourselves at Philips were in-housing a lot of uh, our technology to give us much more data and analytic visibility into our media investments. Um, a lot for efficiency. Um, and we see that uh, there is opportunities to be much more efficient in, in digital media. Um, and I think it's really important because you have, you know, 1.7 seconds on Facebook in order to uh, get somebody's attention. So you need to be really, really nimble um, and know what's working. And so we're, 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 we're increasing uh, the DNA on our media side in-house. Um, and that's changing the role that we have with the agencies who are actually becoming much more strategic about planning um, versus just doing buying. And uh, so I see a bit of a shift there. So brand safety and a bit more, I call it the ad tech, martech uh, investment happening inside of brands is a big trend. Yes. Not just for us, but I, I see it at other brands as well. When you look at uh, the, the pace of change that's happening in this space, um, you know, even as fast as you go, you always feel like you're behind. Um, and what we're trying to do at Philips is make sure that we have as much muscle inside the company so that if all the customers went from Facebook uh, to a new platform, yes. um, or if, you know, um, uh, WeChat comes from China and yes. destroys Twitter, yes. um, we're ready to move at speed as quick as we can to wherever the customers are going, whether that's on Snapchat or whether that's on whatever the next platform is. Yes. Uh, we'll have to see how things evolve. And I think that's what it's all about is, is, is moving from um, a sprint into more of a marathon style because you're yes. it's it's going to be a long run yes. <laughs> a lot of training that's right. That's right. <laughs> well thank you for having me i appreciate uh, being uh, in, in your in your publication yes. thank, thank you, you so much. have a great day